Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today. We're going to work on the Brownie Potter badge, uh, steps one through four. Um, whoops, here we going. If you guys are um, on, go ahead and just add um, who you are and where you're from um, as we get started. So again, we're going to accomplish steps one through four. Uh, so first, we're going to kind of take a little walk around the house and find some pottery just in our everyday lives. Uh, step two, we are going to get to know clay and kind of talk about the different types of clay really um, kind of briefly. Um, and then we're going to learn how to make different types of pots. So right here, I've got a coil pot that I already started smoothing off. So we'll learn how to make either a coil pot or a pinch pot as well as a slab pot. So I used some bark with this one so that's why it's kind of weird there's um, bark pieces on it. Then after that, um, hello! Ooh, New Jersey, Dayton, awesome! Thank you for joining! And then the fourth uh, part of this badge is just making another um, work of art. So I'm um, going to give people a couple more seconds to join. And then the very last step that you'll have to do on your own is step five. So that's going to be um, painting and glazing a work of your own. Um, or not necessarily a work of your own, but a work. So um, if there's any of those kind of paint um, pottery classes or um, studios around, you could do that. Um, so that might take a little bit depending on their availability. Waynesfield, Ohio. Hello. Ooh, New York. Thank you. Lots of New Jersey. Hi, Carrie. Hey, Jigsaw. Hey, Dory. We've got Ivy from New Jersey, Alina from New Jersey, Ellen and Aaron from Havertown, Pennsylvania. Ooh, more New Jersey, Illinois. Hello, Ashley. Molly from Clarence. Evie from Sylvania, Ohio. Elizabeth from Cincinnati. Hello, Olivia from Queens. How come we cannot see you? The screen is black. Is everybody else having that problem? Is the screen black for other people? Uh, Piper from New York. Orlando, hello. Cheviot, hi Lily. Philadelphia. Um, could you guys type in the comments if anybody else isn't seeing me or if the screen is black for them? Yeah, we can see the screen fine from Virginia. Okay. Um, so who was that? Who had asked about that? Rachel, I'm not sure. Um, Maybe if you log off and just kind of click out and then click back in, other people are saying they can see the screen. So I'm not necessarily sure. Okay, so now that we've got um, quite a bit more people, I'm just going to go over what we're doing again, and then we'll kind of take the tour around and see what kind of pottery you can find in the house. So again, my name's Tori. Um, I'm an outdoor program manager with Girl Scouts of Western Ohio out of the Cincinnati um, area, and I'm going to share um, one of my hobbies with you, so um, pottery. Um, so I've been taking, probably been doing pottery for about a year. Um, I most hand build so that means I do not use the wheel and I imagine most of you do not have a wheel at home so that's probably not going to be a big problem um, so we are going to go ahead and do step one so we're going to kind of hunt around the house please excuse the house I have three very hairy animals um, that shed a lot so it's a little hairy um, and kind of look at pottery in our everyday lives so I'm going to grab the computer and I'm sorry if it goes a little crazy as I'm walking around do, 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 do. And we're going to kind of check out what kind of pottery we have, or what kind of ceramics we have in the house. So I'm just going down the stairs. Boop, boop, boop. So I know, let's see. So 
if you can see, kind of going around the windows. So right here, this is a really cool um, plant hanger that I made. I don't know if the light might be, there you go. This is a really cool plant hanger that I made. This was my first project. The plant, I moved it because it wasn't doing well in this window, but it's a really cool um, slab. Um, in this cabinet, I don't know if you guys can see, there are a couple pieces. So there's a hand-built kind of, um, let me open up the cabinet and show you. So we have this piece. So this is kind of um, just like a little cooking crock. And then right here, this was a um, muffin kind of pan that I made. Let's sort of go ahead and keep looking around the house, see what other kind of ceramic things we can find. Um, so here the lighting is back right there. So this right here, whoop, this is um, a planter. So a lot of planters are probably ceramic. Um, this is actually an African violet planter, but um, as long as I don't put water in it, it lets our friend not get too overly watered. So this is a pilea, and it's a money plant. So it's pretty cool. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's take a look around. I'm not seeing anything over here. Can you guys see? Okay. So these are little pumpkins. These are actually things that you guys can make when we start making pinch pots. Um, because it's actually two pinch pots kind of put together. So this guy is ceramic. Oop, I forgot to pull out the plates. Um, in here. These guys are china. So that is a type of uh, ceramic. So they're pretty cool. So a lot of your plates are probably um, stoneware. Um, oh, over here, another windowsill. Right, let me see if I can get it. So we've got terracotta. So there we go. This is actually um, earthware. So we can kind of talk about the different types, there we go, of um, clays and what they kind of do. We've got a couple more planners over there that are ceramic. Um, do, 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 do. We'll head over here. This is my mug collection, so that's all ceramic, and that's one of the reasons I started um, doing pottery is because I really was enjoying mugs and I was collecting them and I thought I could try it as well. Um, we've got this crazy giant, like, I don't know what to call it, like an umbrella holder that's about two foot tall and that guy is ceramic. Um, so I encourage you guys to look around house and see what kind of things you can find that are ceramic or made from pottery. Um, I could go around the whole house, but we would be here all day just looking at pieces. But um, I encourage you to do that after the video is over. So I'm going to head back over to um, my little studio that I have set up. I'm going to try to turn it around so you can see. So I'm not very good at this holding the computer thing. So this is my studio, it's pretty little, um, but I'll go ahead and start kind of pulling pieces out so you can see um, what's all part of it. So, boop, 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 boop. down here, this is just a piece of um, cement board that I've taped off. Um, so this is kind of what I'm gonna be using to work on and it just goes on top of foldable table. Um, I use a rolling pin um, because I do a lot of slab built stuff. Um, so this helped me roll out the clay that I'm working with. I got a spray bottle with water. Um, I have some yard sticks. So they're both about I don't know, a quarter of an inch thick. So I roll out, let me see if I can move you down. There you go. So I'll get a piece of clay and I'll put these down and then roll out on it like this so that my clay stays in even thickness. Um, 
I also have my tools. So I've got like a little bucket right here. Um, so I've got my wire cutting tool. So I use this to cut a piece of clay off of my block of clay. Um, so the clay I have is cone um, five or six stoneware or five six stoneware. Um, so that just refers to the heat it needs um, to fire correctly in the kiln. Um, but my clay comes in a big block of like 25 pounds. So I have to use this tool kind of like this um, to cut off a piece of clay to work with. Um, let me see. I've got my metal rib. Um, so I use this to kind of smooth out the clay so it doesn't have weird bumps or any abnormalities in it um, before I um, start working with it. This is my fettling, kni fettling knife. Um, so I just use this to kind of cut the pieces of clay. Um, but if you guys just have some plastic cutlery, so a plastic knife, a fork, and a spoon, you'll be good to go. Um, let me see what else I have. These are loop tools, so you can kind of, um, I use them mostly just to scratch designs into things, but you can use them to um, kind of cut ribbons of things out as well. This is just a little tool I've been using to smooth things with. I don't know if you can see it. It just has like a tiny little um, end on it like that. That's really nice to get places you can't get your finger in. Um, this is kind of cool. This is a scraffito um, tool. So scraffito is um, when you kind of scratch designs into the clay um, after applying an underglaze. So that's what this guy does. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and talk about um, the clays a little bit more in depth really quick. So clay, where does it come from? So clay actually comes from the ground. Um, it's kind of a combination of um, like decomposing rocks and other natural materials. Um, it's usually found around um, like rivers or creek beds. So if you've ever been to Camp Stony Brook, um, that's one of my camps. Um, we have a really cool clay wall that we go and uh, play in a lot and make like clay facials. Um, but that's pretty much what clay is um, at a really basic level. Um, it does have some other kind of trace minerals in it, um, but I think that's probably okay. It comes from the ground. Um, so I've got a thing of clay right here. I've got a little ball of clay. So, um, you know, it's, this one's brown, but depending on where the clay's from, it can be a whole bunch of different um, other colors. So there's white clay, um, there's clay that's more gray, and then there's even some like really orangey red clay, depending on the sediments and stuff that are found um, in the area that you got it from. So it's very malleable. Um, and then, so this kind of clay is actually stoneware. So it's hard, it's durable, it's most of your um, plates are probably made of, um, unless you've got some nice china hanging around. Um, another type of clay, so I showed you that terracotta pot and I forgot to bring it back up here, um, but that is earthware. Um, so it contains kind of bigger pieces than what is um, in your normal kind of stoneware clay. Um, and usually it's used for things like um, pots, the terracotta plot pots, um, roof tiles, um, and it fires a little bit lower. I'm gonna pull it up really quick. Um, so it's a temperature between 1700 degrees and 2100 degrees. Um, you usually don't glaze earthware, um, so it's still kind of porous after which means it has kind of holes in it um, and water can kind of go through, which makes it soaks up water, which is good for um, plants. So that's why terracotta um, pots are really nice. Um, another type of clay is kaolin or china clay. So that's gonna be really, really fine um, clay. Oops. And um, Kaolin is really, really delicate, so it tears, it's bent, you have to be really careful when working with it. Um, it's not very plastic, so it doesn't really move a lot like our um, stoneware clay. 
and it needs to be fired really, really hot. So between um, 23,000 and 25,000 degrees. So um, it's very hard when it's done and it's almost translucent so you don't, um, it becomes just like really melted and really smooth and kind of glass-like. So those are the ceramic clays. Um, does anybody have ceramic clay that you'll be using today or are most people using like polymer clay? So that uh, polymer clay is like our modeling clay that we usually use um, like in school and stuff like that. So if you have that, um, that is a really good substitute for today because we only had a couple days to grab supplies. Um, but there's a couple things um, that you won't necessarily need to do when you're using your polymer clay. So with um, ceramic clay, like this, um, if I'm attaching things to it, I need to um, kind of take, I'll use a fork, um, and I kind of scratch it, boop, 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 boop. And then I'll apply some um, slip to it. I'm not gonna actually do it because I wanna use this, um, to connect it to something else. If you're using polymer clay, you don't have to do that, but you can still, practice or at least learn the technique so when um, you get some um, ceramic clay you can do that. Does anybody have any questions about um, clay before we get started learning the different um, things that we can build? Um, and I just want to touch on storing clay. So since clay does have water in it, um, it needs to be stored in like a plastic container. So let me go ahead and grab my big block of clay to show you. Um, mine's just in a big plastic bag. So this is my clay that I use. Um, so it's really important that it's in um, some sort of plastic um, and then that you're making sure to tie it off um, so that it stays nice and moist. So that's kind of how the clay comes. Um, Okay, any questions? So, oh, it looks like I've got some comments. Oop, is, are other people? Okay, so it looks like the screen was buffering. I'm sorry. I don't know if maybe my internet isn't strong enough. But I'm hoping that during replay, maybe it won't buffer. Okay. So those were kind of um, the types of clays. So now we're going to kind of get into making um, different things. Um, I've got a really fun fact though that, did you guys know that Juliet Gordon Lowe, so like the founder of Girl Scouts, um, actually did a lot of sculpting and she sculpted busts out of clay and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and clay and pottery has actually been around for a really long time. Um, the oldest fragments of pottery that have been found by archaeologists are from 14,000 BC. 1400, I'm sorry, 1400. Um, and I had another really fun fact. Um, the wheel, so that's how you can make um, pots and stuff just by going around in a circle like this on the wheel. Um, that was created in about... Oh, it was really cool because they think that um, throwing pots on the wheel actually started before people were using the wheel like as a wheel. Um, da, 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 da. I'll, if I find it, I'll let you know. But it was like 800 BC, I think. It was really, really interesting. So hopefully you guys have your clay on you so we can get started. So we're going to go ahead and make three different shapes. So um, I have just a ball of clay. So if you guys have your ball of clay, um, go ahead and grab it. And then if you guys could comment if you're using polymer clay or if you're using um, like ceramic clay. Okay. So if you are using ceramic clay, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go down here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, one of the techniques that you use is called wedging. So let me kind of roll him out because I've already wedged him. But it's um, kind of pushing all of the air out of 
the clay. So since I cut mine off of my block, it's brand new clay, I don't really have to wedge it very much, um, if all at all. Um, but you can reclaim clay. So if you use a piece and it br or make a piece and it breaks, um, you can go ahead and wedge it a lot, like 40, 50, 60 times. Um, so what I'm kind of doing is I'm pushing against the sides um, and kind of just driving downwards. And it kind of creates kind of like this little ram head. So as it kind of um, does that, it pushes the air out. So I'm just going to do that a little bit. And I'm going to kind of finish him off. Um, let me see what people are saying real quick, just in case anybody had a question. That is wedging. Okay. So it looks like most people have Crayola or Air Dry Clay. Um, yeah, if you have Play-Doh, we can still use the same techniques. Uh, Crayola, Air Dry Clay. Yeah. So, um, perfect. So you guys don't have to wedge your clay then. So that's just an extra step. Um, that you don't have to do. So I'm just going to kind of finish them off. And I think we're going to start with our pinch pot first, since I just have this gigantic piece of clay. So go ahead and make a circle or a sphere, math. And we're going to go ahead and if you're right-handed, you're going to use your right thumb. And if you're left-handed, you're going to use your left thumb. And we're just going to Stick our thumb right in the middle and kind of push it, um, not so that it comes out, but kind of towards the end. So you kind of, oh, you can't see it. I've got my thumb in the clay. And so you're going to use your other two fingers, so your um, pointer and your middle finger. I'm going to try to show you guys this. And you're just lightly going to press. It's not really a full, like, pinching. It's really like a gentle pressing. Um, and you're going to go ahead and go around and start at the bottom. So I'm kind of starting down here with the pressing and as I get farther around, I'll start moving up. This hand just kind of supports everything. And you're just gonna kind of gently press the clay together. And as you keep going, that hole starts getting bigger and bigger. So I told you guys earlier that um, these pumpkins that I made are actually two of these pressed together. So it's a really fun thing um, that you guys can make. You can make acorns. Um, another fun thing is just kind of like a crazy looking monster. Um, and we're just going to slowly press this around. And I'll show that once we're a little bit farther with our pinch pot. Let's see if anybody has any questions while we're doing this. And this might take a couple minutes. You're just going to gently press. Sorry, my cat is behind me and scratching the chair. <laughs> so if you hear a bunch of scratching, that's what she's doing. Um, if you're using uh, ceramic clay, you might start getting little cracks in it. So um, what I usually do is I just spray a little bit of water on my working surface. And I just kind of go over it like that. Um, just to kind of smooth it back out. Um, as you're using ceramic clay, um, it kind of starts, the moisture kind of starts evaporating and like getting absorbed by other things. So if I touch it onto this, you can kind of see there's like a little mark, try to, yeah, right here. Um, there's a little mark of kind of like the water and stuff like that from it, a little bit of clay. Um, but like your hands will start absorbing it. Uh, my hands are really dry, so I think it just kind of takes it up. And then you can kind of start lightly um, making a foot to it. So the foot is kind of like the bottom of the pot. Um, and you want to make sure that the edges are still kind of thick. So they're not super thin. Um, and then you can kind of smush your edges a little bit so they're nice and flat. So this would kind of be the first part of a pumpkin. My other pinch pot is a little bit more gigantic, but I guess I could maybe make it more that size. Um, but to make a pumpkin, there we go. What you would do is you would take your two pinch pots and put them together like this. See how that kind of makes that pumpkin shape? Um, since I'm using ceramic clay, 
I would where did my oh here's my fork. Take my fork and I will go ahead and rough this up. This is called scoring. So this is really just gonna um, help keep the two pieces together once we push them um, together. So I'm just scoring both pieces. Boop, 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 boop. If you have a really um, stiff um, paintbrush, you can do this with the paintbrush. Um, and then I just have my slip. So I actually, um, so slip can be a couple things. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of lovely looking at it. Um, you can use, most people just use um, part water. Sorry, <laughs> all you see is my gym. Um, part water um, and just clay. Um, and I actually use a little bit of vinegar or, or mostly vinegar. Um, that's just what we've been doing at um, the studio that I go to and it's been working for me so that's what I do. So I'm just going to go back to making our pumpkin. So I've got my vinegar and I'm just going to kind of go ahead and go around it like this. Looks like I've got some comments. So if you're using your modeling clay, you do not need to do this part necessarily. You can score it still, um, but you do not need to take the slip. Okay. Um, and then you just kind of put them together. Oops. Even this guy back out. They're not quite the same size. Um, and then you just kind of move them um, so that those sides are not quite matching up perfectly. Um, there we go. So they're kind of getting swished together. This side's going to need a little extra assistance. There we go. Um, but once you kind of get them together, um, they're not moving too, too, too much. So you might need some help. It looks kind of like a cupcake, actually. Um, so we still have this. This is our connection point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go this way, this way, this way, all the way around. And then we'll go the other way. So I'm just going to flip it over. This way, this way, this way. Just to kind of interlock it. And then you can take a spoon or just your finger. If you're using the ceramic clay, you're going to want to get a little bit of water. And you'll just kind of start smoothing those lines together. I'm just going to kind of smooth it all out, back and forth, kind of interlocking the two clays together. Boop, boop. And the other clay, uh, the one clay obviously I just did, the other one I made yesterday, so he's a little stiffer. Okay. And so then you'll kind of smooth him out. You can make the shape a little bit more <laughs> pumpkin-y if you want. Um, but this plastic spoon is actually a really good tool that you can use to smooth stuff out. I'm just going to go ahead, go around, and smooth him out. This is going to, this tart's going to take a while. So, we're not going to do the whole thing. I'll just do a couple pieces, or parts of it, so you can kind of see. Um, and then if you have any kind of pieces flakes, you can pull them off, but you're just going to go around and start smoothing them out like that. Um, I really like working with clay. It's very earthy. It smells really good, um, like being outside, and I find it to be like just really calming and relaxing. Um, but once you have your clay um, all kind of smoothed out, which this guy still needs some time, but um, that's okay, you'll Kind of make the bottom of where you want your pumpkin to sit so we're going to go that way and then you can use um, something like this to just kind of make um, the pumpkin lines and then you can kind of go through and smooth them out a little bit more 
um, and then you can take a little piece of clay and make the little, um, what is that called, the vine as well. So I'm just kind of pinching a little piece together, I kind of got like a square bottom right there. So this guy still needs like 30 minutes of work at least before he's good, but I'm going to go ahead and move over to the next piece. And then you would just score and slip him there, um, and then you've got like a cute little pumpkin. Okay. Um, we'll just check and see if we've got any questions on any of that before we go um, over to making a coil pot. How long does it take to dry? Um, so it really does depend on kind of your environment, um, on how long it takes to dry, um, probably about a day. Um, so there's different um, kind of stages of clay. So this is just a piece, um, and this stuff as well. This is really wet clay, so this is really uh, malleable, it's very kind of squishy, you can do a lot with it. Um, so that's kind of one of the first, um, the first stage of clay. So it's very wet. Um, and then you will go into leather hard. So that's, I don't know if I have anything, but this might be leather hard. Um, so it's not quite as squishy as this one is, um, but this is a really good time to um, kind of carve into it. Um, so I'll just carve my name on the bottom. Oh, that's too big. Because um, it has a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more stiff, a little bit more rigid. Um, so it's a better time to kind of carve stuff. Um, and then after that we have bone dry. So I know I have a couple pieces that are definitely bone dry. Here we go. This guy um, was an attempt at wheel throwing. Um, he actually isn't that bad. You can kind of tell um, on the inside that it was wheel thrown. Um, so this guy's bone dry. That means all the water that was in him is sucked out and he is ready to be fired, so put in the kiln. Um, he's very um, brittle um, because it is all dry, all that moisture is out. So you have to be really careful if you're transporting this back to like your studio to get fired because he could break on the way back. Um, so this is bone dry. Um, if you make something and it's bone dry, um, you can, maybe if you're like, oh, I don't really like it, you can break it up there, into little pieces and it can still be reclaimed. So until it's been fired, um, you can still reclaim any of the clay that you use. So I'm just getting my kind of my bucket of misfit clay. So these are, this is just water and all the clay that I have deemed inappropriate <laughs> for use. So you can kind of see that this is a square. This was um, a piece of um, something that was bone dry that I didn't like. So I just, you can break it up, put it in here, let it soak for a bit um, and then you can pull it out so a lot of it is very silty right now um, so this stuff right here would make a pretty good um, glue for our for our clay um, but then you can kind of pour out the water um, let it sit for a little bit and then wedge it for a really long time um, and make it into regular clay again so this is my apron that I usually wear because I can make a giant mess with pottery and with clay. Um, so yeah, that's what this is. So if I have anything that doesn't work out, I just plop it in here and then I'll reclaim it. It'll make a really good slip, some of it in the bottom. Okay, so then there's bone dry. So bone dry, leather hard and then wet this is um, everything that's considered greenware so it's not um, been fired yet 
And then we've got bisquare. So this little um, cup is bisquare. So this means it's been fired one time. Um, so after you fire it, then you can paint it or glaze it. Um, and once you put it through, let me see, a second time, then it's glazeware. So this is just like a little mug that I made. Um, so that's kind of the life process of um, a piece of clay. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do coil pots. So again, you're just gonna need um, your, a ball of clay. And coil pots are one of the oldest um, kind of type of pots that people made. I don't know where my sample went. Oh, there he is. So the really cool thing with coil pots is um, a lot of times you can't really tell that they're coil pots because after you coil them, you can kind of see in the inside that it's coil. Um, and I started smoothing it out on the outside on part of it and then didn't quite get to the whole thing. Is if you don't want it to be all coily, you can start smoothing it out. Um, or you can keep the coils um, as decoration. So coil pots. So first, we're gonna need our piece of clay. Um, and we're gonna need to make kind of the foot or the bottom. Oh, thanks, I see people saying they're loving this. Um, if you guys are enjoying this, I would um, check out some of your local um, pottery places. Um, I know some of them are doing um, like take home bags for kids um, when we're kind of social isolating. So um, I know that Whistle Stop in Loveland was doing it, um, Ohio, so that doesn't help everybody. <laughs> um, but check out some of your pottery studios in the area and see if anybody's doing grab bags um, for kids. So I'm going to just pinch off kind of a piece of this, um, and this is going to be the bottom. So you're just going to kind of plop it down here. Things are going to start getting really shaky, so um, bear with me for a minute. Um, so you're just going to kind of pound down on it. And this is going to be the bottom um, of of our pot. So he's not super circular, but that's okay. You can fix that if you want to, or he can be an abnormal shape. It's up to you, or an abstract shape. Um, just gonna. We've got a piece right here that's just a little bit thinner, so he's not gonna make a good foot. Okay, so here is our foot. So then um, I'm just gonna move him out of the way because we're gonna need a little bit of space because we need to make our coils. So you're just gonna pinch off um, kind of a piece of clay, um, roll it between your hands just a little bit, and then we're gonna put it down on the table and then you're just gonna really carefully, um, see how I kind of have my fingers spread, just really gently um, roll it back and forth. Um, if you put too much pressure, it'll kind of start getting kind of floppy um, and kind of making um, thinner parts and thicker parts. So just kind of spread your hands back and forth. I'm going to my fingertips, kind of to the heel of my hand. This might take a minute, well, that's okay. Ah, I keep getting in the, the water I sprayed on here, so that's not helping super well. Um, if anybody has any questions, you guys um, go ahead and add them in there while we're doing this, and I will answer any questions that I can. Okay, so we've got a pretty good looking piece, and go ahead and just make a couple of those um, so we don't have to keep coming back and forth um, while we're making our little pot. a rag around is nice while doing this. And you're just going to kind of roll it back and forth. My like whole table is moving. Um, 
not wanting to roll out. There he goes. I think he might be a little dry. Oh, looks like we've got a comment. How do people discover clay? That is a really good question. I don't know that we know exactly how they discovered it, um, but I'm assuming, um, yeah, I, I don't know that we know exactly how they discovered it. We just know that um, they did about 1400 BC. Um, at least that's kind of when um, the first shard of clay that we were able to find has been discovered. Um, but I will look into that because I'm not 100% sure. Um, I just know that people found clay and somehow they figured out that um, if you fire it really hot, um, you can make like pots out of it. Um, and people used pots for more than just like plants and stuff like that. You used your pots to carry water from places. Um, you stored your food in it. Um, they were really, really important. So Anna, I'm not 100% sure, but I will double check on that. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna score the sides of our foot or our base. And then we're going to take, um, if you're doing ceramic, kind of go ahead and put your vinegar or your slip around it. And then we're going to take um, your little coil and we're going to go around. So to make it nice and even, um, I like to kind of cut it right here. Um, and this just makes sure that things are really sticking um, together a little bit better. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Um, and then I just kind of wiggle it and kind of push it down a little bit, not too hard, um, just to make sure it's really sticking to that piece below. Let's do that. So we've cut out our first little coil and then we can take this. We're going to go ahead and score it again. Boop, boop, boop. And go around. Um, oops, not quite big enough. And connect it and then kind of push it down a little bit to make sure that it's really connecting. And you can start making um, shapes that start kind of flaring out a little bit. So I've just been kind of stacking them directly on top of each other. But if you want to start getting a shape that starts to flare out a little bit, you just kind of go a little bit off center. Um, and then after a couple coils, you'll start getting something that will kind of um, start flaring back out. So this is how to make um, a pinch pot. So I'll do a couple more um, rounds of this, just so you guys kind of get a hang of it and see how it works. Um, because when we go into our next step, so step four, um, it's making just another piece of art using our new skills. So you can pick to do um, a work of art using coils, um, or you could make something um, using a pinch pot, um, or you could make something um, using slab pottery, which is what we're going to do next. I'm just going to cut that piece right there. Kind of make sure that it's all situated. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. You can make a really cute basket with this and kind of make some um, more long coils and then you can braid a little basket like that. Um, that would be a cute little fun little project, especially since it's spring, or you can make it like a little bird's nest and put um, some eggs in it, make some little eggs. So again, we're just scoring it, and you guys are probably going way faster than I am because I think everybody is using modeling clay, so don't mind me.
It looks like it's freezing. I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep going and then hopefully it'll figure itself out um, during the replay. Hi, cat. What you doing? Um, excuse me, Misty. I don't, I don't know what you're doing. Dude. Okay. Thank you. Hi, kitten. Okay. So, keeps freezing, we'll watch recorded version. Okay, yeah, I'm hoping the recorded version might be better. Um. Okay. So, this is... Our coil pot. So, um, like I said earlier, if you don't want the coils to be seen, you can actually use your spoon or your finger and just kind of start smoothing them out. Um, you just need to kind of make sure you're supporting the inside, um, but you can just start kind of smoothing it out like that with a spoon or with your finger. There you go. Okay, so I know this, oh my gosh, we're already at 45 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and you guys kind of got that and start working on a piece of slab pottery. So what you're going to need, you can use a ball of clay. Um, I'm just going to use a piece like this because um, what I like to start out with is just kind of smacking it. Um, on the table and just kind of pick it up and throw it, pick it up and throw it. Attempt to make it more of a rectangle. I'm um, gonna kind of flatten it out just a little bit. There we go. And this takes practice to kind of get it um, situated. Most of my work is um, using slabs. Okay, so kind of spread out a little bit. He's not perfectly flat. Um, so that's where these will come in handy. Um, so if you don't have them, that's okay. You can kind of squish it down with your hands. Um, no problem there. Uh, but just make sure that it's going to be kind of... Um, about the same um, height throughout. So I'm just kind of going to roll it out. I'm sorry my desk is like shaking because I have all this um, like the ceramics and stuff on it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of roll it back and forth. And the yardstick just makes sure that um, it's staying about the same thickness throughout. So I'll do it one way and then I'll flip it over and do it another way. There. So we've got our slab. It's kind of little but that is okay. Um, so at this point if I if you have a rib I would just kind of take the rib um, and it just kind of smooths it out. It makes kind of like a satiny sheen. It's really pretty. Um, but you just kind of smooth out the clay. And then you can pick it up, flip it over, and smooth out the clay again. So depending on what you want to make um, will really depend on how big of a slab you make. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and make another um, tiny little planter. I've got some planters that like th look like this, um, and I really like them. Um, I grabbed a piece of bark from outside and just kind of rolled that on there, so I think I'm going to duplicate that again. You guys can make whatever you would like, um, but all you do is kind of smooth it out, um, and then I'm going to grab my little kind of knife 
to attempt to make some straight line cuts. So, um, so to cut that piece off, and then let's see. Um, one thing to note about clay is once it's been fired both times, it kind of shrinks about 18%. So you want to make things a little bit bigger um, than what you um, want it to be. Um, so it's not like super, super tiny. Um, polymer clay does not have that problem. Just gonna check, get a couple more comments. Make sure nobody else is having any freezing issues. Okay. Um, so we've got kind of our little slab. If you have time, um, I would kind of let it harden up just a little bit um, so it's not super duper um, wet and kind of sticky. Um, polymer clay, sh again, shouldn't have that problem. But I'm just going to kind of, you can kind of see it's like leaving water marks behind. So it is slowly starting to dry out. Oops, kind of made it unpretty. Um, so you're going to need kind of the part that goes around, but then you're also going to need to make the bottom. So I think I'm just going to take this piece of clay that we uh, that was using earlier and just kind of roll him out a little bit. Make the bottom. Um, so I actually have a set of um, like cookie cutters. Here they are. A whole bunch of different sizes, circular ones, so that I can kind of um, use them to make the bases for um, all the things I make. So let's see. If I want this one, and I usually pick something that's slightly bigger, um, just so there's a little extra room. I'll go with this one. And I just, um, I'm gonna cut him out. And that'll be the base. And then all this extra clay um, can be used for other things. Um, if you're making like a um, mug, you can kind of use some of this to make a handle um, if it's long enough. Okay, so here is our base. Um, and then here is what's going to be the sides. If you have any cool textures you want to put on, um, you can do that right now. Um, I went outside the other day and I found some really cool stuff out in my yard. Um, so I found this fern. So I think I'm just going to put the fern right there. This probably starts getting into an outdoor art badge. Um, so I would look into that before you make something. Um, and I'm just going to lightly roll him on here. But you don't have to do that. You can use beads. Um, you can do whatever you would like. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Got a little fern. You guys see that? It's got a little fern on there. Um, okay, so now that we have that, um, what we need to do is we need to cut this down um, so that we can join them together. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to kind of Cut that edge and I'm kind of cutting on like a maybe like a 45 degree angle so I've got that on a 45 degree angle, degree angle there and so then I need to cut this one on a 45 degree angle as well that way when they um, get put together they kind of match each other okay so then we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to use this for scoring just because it's a little finer. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of scrape this up a little bit. And scrape the other side up a bit. And it already, already has the vinegar on it. Um, and then I'm going to stick them together. So you kind of stick it together first wiggle it, make sure they're really sticking, and just give it a second, a little bit of time. And then once 
Um, let's see, I'm sorry, it's like so far away from everything. Um, you can start gently kind of blending this together. This is a little bit um, 